Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to our midweek gospel explosion pastoral teachings. And certainly we thank God for you sharing your time with us on today. Well, we've been off for a few weeks. Now we are back in the saddle again. And certainly we thank the Lord for his grace and his mercy uh, through the time that we had some leisure time and was away. And we now are starting again with our midweek gospel explosion. Well, tonight we'd like to call your attention uh, to Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Again, we thank God for you sharing your time with us uh, on today. And we do honor God who is sovereign and supreme and to his son, Jesus Christ, who is Savior and Lord, and to the Holy Ghost, who is our comforter, leader, teacher, and our guide. And to each of you in your respective places, we greet you with Jesus' joy and certainly in divine love. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8, verse 35 you will find these words recorded. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him <clears throat> that loved us. Verse 38, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you now for this preaching and teaching moment. We pray now, God, that you release your power, your presence, your anointing upon this, your vessel, that I may preach and teach with power, with clarity. Anoint each of us the more that we would believe, receive, explore, apply, and share this word. In advance, we give you all of the honor all of the glory, and all of the praise. For it's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Every heart said, Amen. Well, tonight, <clears throat> we're going to kind of conclude something we started several weeks ago. We was talking about the love of our Heavenly Father. And we wanted to uh, teach on that because many times when we go through we're going through our trials and tribulations. We forget how much God really loves us in spite of us. So uh, tonight we want to make sure that we really grasp and get the fact that God loves us in spite of us. His love for us is far that we can ever imagine or think. We were talking about in the past that in order to really understand our Heavenly Father's love, we have to accept his love. And then after accepting his love, then we must be changed by his love. And we taught those messages uh, a few weeks ago. So tonight, we are going to tag this message, Rest in your heavenly father's love. Rest to refresh, to take it easy because of the love that your heavenly father has for you. As a child of God, my brothers and my sisters, no matter what happens in your life, your father in heaven loves you dearly and nothing you can do to ever change that. God loves us and nothing that we can do can ever change that. Whether you are going through good times 
or even facing challenges or challenging times, you need to know that your Father in heaven loves you. Uh -huh. Even when you feel like you have failed, know that you will always be the apple of his eye. Are you hearing me? Now let's turn to Jeremiah uh, chapter 31 and verse 3 and see what the prophet Jeremiah says about this. Jeremiah 31 and 3. If you're there, listen to what Jeremiah says. The Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. God loves us with an everlasting love, a love that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Did you get that? You are safe in his embrace. He loved you before you ever knew him. Uh-huh. There is nothing for you to prove. You only need to rest and receive your heavenly father's love for you. If you think you have messed up, in which many of us do, and all of us do, now is the time when you think you have messed up. Now is the time to turn to your heavenly father. Because in his loving arms, you will find hope, security, and refuge from the storms of life. Now, let's look at the text again. Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 39. Look closely. Here's what he says. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all, the, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now, I want to drive that home because I want you to get that. My brothers and my sisters, nothing and no one can ever separate you from the love of your heavenly father. Isn't that good news? This is complete assurance in the unshakable foundation of God's promise to us. Are you hearing? There are no disclaimers. The text says, Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 39, the text says nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Now, what does this mean? Well, this means your mistakes, failings, and sins cannot separate you from the love of your heavenly Father. In fact, it is the Father's love that gives you the power to Overcome every mistake, failure, 
and sin in your life. It is your father's love. Now let's look at Romans again. And we're going to go to Romans chapter 6, verse 14. Listen carefully. Listen what it says. No. No, it says for sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. You see that? What does that mean? Well, this means the more you experience the love and grace of your heavenly father, the more you fall in love with him with God, our Heavenly Father, and fall out of love with sin. Are you hearing me? Listen, today you are living under the freedom of God's amazing grace. That's what he said in Romans chapter 6, verse 14. His unmerited, undeserved, and unearned favor in your life. Today, as Christians, we are living in that type of life. We are living that type of life because grace gives us freedom, freedom from lack, freedom from fear, freedom from addictions, freedom from curse, and freedom from evil and sin. Grace God's unmerited favor gives us freedom from all of those things. So now, I hear you. You're asking, well, how can I rest in the Heavenly Father's love? Well, my first point tonight, <clears throat> and to rest in your Heavenly Father's love you must remember this, that you are beloved and well-pleasing. In other words, you, you are loved by God and well-pleasing. When Jesus the Christ was baptized in the Jordan River, the word of God recalls or records in Matthew uh, chapter 3. So let's turn there for a moment. Matthew chapter 3. And many of us, we know what it says. But Matthew chapter 3, uh, verse number <clears throat> verse number 3. Uh, verse number, I'm sorry, verse number six, 6 and 7. 16 and 17. Listen what it says. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and uh, verse 17. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Verse 17, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You see that? So now, Whenever Jesus the Christ is preached, I believe the, heav the heavens opens to him. Meaning that when we hear messages that are Jesus Christ centered, we are really standing under an open heaven and all of the blessings, favor, and goodness of God fall upon us. Now watch this. Let's go to chapter 4 of St. Matthews and verse 3. And when the tempter came, and when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, Command that these stones be made bread. 
Now, there's a reason why I'm going this route, so stay with me. <clears throat> Listen carefully. You see, when, 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 notice that God the Father had just affirmed Jesus as his beloved son at the Jordan in chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Notice that. However, when the devil came or when the devil showed up to tempt Jesus, he removed or he removed the word beloved. Uh-huh. So what does that mean to us? I believe it means this. Whenever you are tempted, every time you are tempted, just remind yourself that I am God's beloved child. That means I am loved by God. I'm God's beloved child and my father loves me. Temptation is going to come, but when temptations come, begin to speak it. I am God's beloved. I am God's child. I am God's beloved child. And he loves me. No temptation can win over you when you rest securely in your heavenly father's love. Now, let's look at it from a physical standpoint. As fathers or mothers, when you speak words of approval and affirmation to your children, you are really empowering them for success. So, through the word of God, it empowers us for success as God speaks to us as his children children. So notice Jesus replied. Now in Jesus reply, he didn't have to prove to the devil that he was the son of God. He simply replied by saying this in Matthew's chapter four, verse four. He said, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You see that? So then, the word that proceeded from the mouth of God concerning Christ and his identity with God, the word of God, are the words that proceeded from the mouth of God concerning Christ and his identity with God was, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now, what do we really get from that? Well, listen carefully. My brothers and my sisters, that is how the Father sees you and me today. He sees us in Christ. And in Christ, we are his precious, beloved children in whom he is well pleased. Isn't that good news? So every time you are fearful, every time you are consumed by anger, depression, or worry, hear your heavenly father saying, you are my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, keep hearing it 
and repeating it until you find rest, peace, and joy overflowing in your heart. So my first point tonight, and we are going to know how to rest in our Heavenly Father's love, we need to remember that we are beloved and well-pleasing. My second point tonight, if we're going to rest in our Heavenly Father's love, remember that you are accepted in your Father's beloved or your Father's love or loved by your Father. Now, we talked about that a few weeks ago about accepting your Father's love. So if you're going to rest in your Father's love, your Heavenly Father's love, then you must remember that you are accepted in your Heavenly Father's love. You see, God the Father called his son Jesus the Christ. He called Jesus his beloved and said that he was pleasing before he had performed any miracles or act of service. Remember when, when, when God said that in Matthew 3 and 16 and 17, that this is my beloved son whom I will please, Jesus had had done had done any miracles or performed any acts, so he said that Jesus Christ was pleasing in his sight before Jesus did any act of service. You see, Jesus the Christ is well pleasing in his Father, not because watch this, not because of what he has done, but because of who he is. Jesus didn't have to do anything or accomplish anything before he was considered beloved and pleasing in his father's sight. He didn't have to do anything or accomplish anything before he was considered beloved and pleasing to his heavenly father. Are you hearing me? Now, there's some good news. What is that, Pastor? Well, here it is. The good news is that our Father in heaven has made us accepted in the beloved. Now, let me see if I can help you. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. Give you a little time to get there. Listen what it says. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us, here it is, accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. You see that? Wow. That is unbelievable. That is so profound. So now, listen carefully. The moment, the moment you receive him into your life, the moment you receive Jesus the Christ into your life, God the Father made you accepted in the beloved, in the love of God. My brothers and my sisters, God wants you and me to know that you are now part of the family and you are beloved to him the same way that Jesus Christ is. Are you getting me? And that is accepted in his beloved. 
Now, you may be asking, what does accepted really mean? Well, accepted, accepted in the text means simply highly favored. You are highly favored into his beloved, into the love of God. So, we as believers are highly favored, greatly blessed, and deeply loved. It's a powerful thing, my brothers and my sisters, to know that you haven't been left alone to fend for yourself in life. You have someone that promised to be with you all the way unto the end. You have a father in heaven who loves you, favors you, protects you, and watches over you. Wow, isn't that wonderful? So we can rest in our heavenly father's love. Now, if you're going to do that, remember my first point. Remember that you are, you are beloved and well-pleasing to our Heavenly Father. My second point was, you must remember that you are accepted. You are accepted in your Father's beloved. I got one more point tonight. If you're going to rest, if you're going to be refreshed and have ease, in your heavenly father's love, my last point tonight is you must remember that your father's love makes a difference because God loves you makes a difference. Many people say they love God, but do they believe that God loves them? So you must remember that your heavenly father, his love makes a difference. Here it is. Believe the father's love for you. Believe our heavenly father's love for us. See, my brothers and my sisters, his grace See his grace. See his grace. See his unmerited favor. See his divine love for us. And come boldly into his throne room of grace and receive help in your time of need. You see, when you see through the eyes of faith, and believe the Father's love, our Heavenly Father's love shining on you, guess what? Darkness fades away. Depression fades away. Destructive addictions fades away. I say that again. When you see through the eyes of faith, and believe the Heavenly Father's love shining on you, darkness fades away. Depression fades away. Destructive addiction fades away. You see, the more you place yourself under His grace, the more Sin will have no dominion over you. Did you get that? Temptation will have no power over you when you are saturated with your heavenly father's love, with your heavenly father's approval, with your heavenly father's favor, and his acceptance. Are you with me? 
You see, my brothers and my sisters, all this freedom can be yours when you truly believe that your father loves you and accept you and you can rest in his love. When you believe that, then you can rest. So, in other words, when you believe that all these freedoms will come, you'll be free from a lot of things that may have, have held you fast. So, in conclusion, listen carefully. Paul says in our text that no foes can daunt us. No fears can hurt us, for we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Paul says, no things past, present, nor things to come shall be able to separate us from our heavenly father's love. So then, we as Christians, we as Christians are victorious. We are free from sin judgment because Christ died for us. Because Christ paid our sin debt. He died for us. He wiped the slate clean. He did it for us. Because from because Christ lives in us. Now he lives in us. At one time, we was merely defeated. But Christ lived in us. And he lives in us from defeat. Christ lived in us, free from discouragement, because Christ is coming for us. Remember, let me say this again, because I want you to get it. We are free from sin judgment. Because Christ died for us. We are free from defeat because Christ lives in us. We are free from discouragement because Christ is coming back for us. We are free from fear because Christ intercedes for us. So there is no condemnation, no frustration, and no separation. I can, you can, we all can rest in our Heavenly Father's love. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you now for this preaching and teaching moment. Pray now, God, that this word tonight will sink deeply to our hearts, minds, and our spirits, that we become better, better Christians, better disciples, better ambassadors of yours as we carry out the assignments that you have given us individually and collectively. We pray now, God, that this word will be a light unto our pathway, and a lamp unto our feet as we go forth in this life. We pray for those who are listening, that they receive this word, and this word will sink deeply into their hearts, minds, and their spirits. And we pray for those who uh, have backslidden, those who may have walked away from the presence of you, and those who may not know your name. We pray that the, the backslider will come back, and the one, the ungodly, will get to know a Savior who loves them in spite of them. We pray for those who may be sick and shut in on tonight that 
and they will look to the hills which cometh all of their help. We pray for those who may be suffering with a malady or sickness or disease. We pray that they would, they would be healed because of the stripes by Jesus' stripes. We were healed. We pray for those who may be unconcerned on tonight, that they will get in a hurry. Those who may take this word lightly, that they would get more interested. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for our past, our present, and we thank you for what you're going to do in our future. We love you, and we know that you first loved us. We thank you for all that you've done, and we thank you for what you are doing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Now, if you have been listening and you're not saved, we we'll give you an opportunity tonight to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And if you're backslidden, we'll give you an opportunity to come back. He's waiting on you because the Bible declares that he's married to the backslider. So come on back home. He'll, he'll welcome you with open arms. But if you're not saved, will you just pray this prayer with me? Lord God, I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. He died for my sins and you raised him for my redemption. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and make me a new creature, a new creation. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. If you pray that prayer with me tonight, or if you repeat it after me, according to the word of God, you are saved. And I want to encourage you, your next step is to Connect with a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church so you can know what your next steps are. And if you need our church, please call us. That's Innovation Baptist Church. Our phone number is 850-575-0818. You can call us and someone will help you with your next steps. Now, if you uh, need a replay of this message on tonight, you can log on to our website, innovationbaptistchurch.org. And you can get a replay and you can even share it with someone else. And until Sunday morning at the 9.30 or 9.45, excuse me, a.m. hour, you can join us at the sanctuary or you can join us on Facebook Live, 9.45 a.m. Sunday morning. Until then, stay strong, stay safe, and be blessed is my prayer.